morning and welcome to Purpose for Life Ministry. We are so glad that you invited us into your home this morning. Please join the pastor and I as we declare that Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord and God, God is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him praise. Amen. Oh, yeah. yes. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, let's just take a moment and give God praise because he alone is worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And would you join us as we affirm our faith? Because this, this is, is the day that, that the Lord, Lord has made. made. We're, we're going to rejoice and be glad, glad in it. This, this is the day we're going to be a blessing to God and to others. This is the day we're going to be victorious over anything that the world or the devil brings our way. This is the day we're going to be fruitful and effective in everything that we put our hands to do. This is the day we're going to have peace that the world didn't give us and the world can't take it away. This is the day we're going to be healthy from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. And finally, come on, this is the day we're going to let go and let God have his way. Amen. To God be the glory, amen. And all the wonderful things he has done, is doing, and will do on behalf of his people, his children. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, my sister. You're welcome. All right, would you turn with me to the gospel according to Matthew? Uh, we're going to pick up in chapter 16, and we're going to read verses 13 through 20. That's Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Through 20. Amen? I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and beginning in verse 13, it reads like this. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? I'm sorry, I just got a little excited about that. Well, that one statement right there, amen? Amen. All right, let's continue. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my Father who is in heaven. Verse 18. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We've already invoked the Spirit of the Lord through prayer. We've already got our praise on. And uh, again, I'm always excited to praise God because once you praise God, it's something about just the atmosphere changing and your attitude changing mm -hmm. while you're praising God. You might start off in, in a funk. You might start off feeling a little sad or, or you might start off, you know, with, with some, some issues going on. But once you start singing and hearing the, the words of the song, like the song we just sang, uh, our God is an awesome God. He's awesome. And the more we kept singing and singing, that the more we were excited about what we were uh, proclaiming and who he is. Amen? Amen. So... I want to key in on verse 18, and then I'll give you the subject. It says here, Jesus says, And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. I'm going to stop right there. Because mm -hmm. my subject is, Jesus is building his church to last. He's building his church to last. Amen? Amen. Jesus says, upon this rock, I will build my church. And my brothers and sisters, 
I know if you are a part of the body of Christ, you should be really excited because mm -hmm. isn't it awesome to be Amen. involved in something great? Yes. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. This is something that is so beyond uh, the world, of course, but yes. so beyond uh, what we could plan ourselves that Jesus says, I got this. Amen. But what I'm doing, Jesus says, in building the church, I'm going to need and I'm going to choose some brothers and sisters, some children of God to be a part of this, this plan that I'm yes. doing. Amen? Yes. That means whatever you are, wherever you are, and wherever you fit in the body, it was on purpose. Mm -hmm. It was because God chose you and said, I need this one spot to be filled mm -hmm. by you. Nobody else can fill that spot, by the way, mm -hmm. but you. Amen? Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that Jesus, two things. One, Jesus is the one doing the work. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, Jesus says, I will build my church. Yes. Amen? And then he says, uh, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail. Prevail means to be victorious. So when he says, the gates of hell or the gates of Hades shall not prevail, what he's saying is, they are uh, not going to be effective in, in making or, or taking away any ground mm -hmm. or, 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 or being effective in, in strongholding us, yes. you know, binding us as the church. Now, I'm not saying that he can't come against you. <laughs> I'm not saying, apart from Christ, you got a chance against the adversary. But in the body, with Jesus in control, amen, amen. You, there's no way he's going to win anything. Amen? amen? He's doing it with his body, which is us, the church. Y'all hear me? Jesus is building his church for what reason? One, to withstand any adversarial attack that comes his way. And I keep saying his way because it's his church. Amen? Amen. We are the church, but we belong to someone else. You are not your own, the Bible says. When you gave your life, you are bought with the price. The Bible says you are not your own. You belong to God. And when you gave your life to Christ, you became his for his purpose, for his glory, but for your edification, Amen. which is to build us up, to encourage us, mm. you know, in the body. Amen? Yeah. But it's anything that we're doing in the body is to glorify God and to help one another along. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so we're to prevail, not the adversary. See, he says, I'm building my church. Upon this rock, I'm building my church. Yes. The gates of hell shall not prevail, mm. but we, the church, will prevail. Remember, prevail means to be victorious. Wow. So we are a part of something that will always last because Jesus is eternal. Jesus is the head and we are the body right. connected to the head. Mm. And if Jesus is going to always exist, hello, hello. so will I. Yes. Jesus is building something great in the body. And, and I'm saying he is building, not was. See, because as long as people are alive and still coming into Christ and coming into the body, it's, it's going to be a building process. You hear what I'm saying? So today I want you to be encouraged to know that whatever Jesus is doing in the body, it will be victorious. Yes. We will have victory. We will be overcomers. Regardless of what we might be going through, you can take solace in the fact of knowing that you're going to be victorious and that one day, whatever we're dealing with here, it'll pass away yes. and we will shine just like Christ. Mm. Amen? Amen? That's a beautiful thing. I can't yes. wait for that day. This declaration, though, is more than the same. Jesus is declaring a truth that about his plans that some of us really need to, to, to kind of listen to the Holy Spirit to give us that extra understanding or revelation of, of what it means to be a part of the body of Christ. See, you hear me keep saying, I'm excited about being a part. I'm excited about his plan because his plan is to show the existence mm -hmm. of what God is doing forever. Yes. Not just for the moment. Mm -hmm. There's a plan that God had already placed uh, in motion before the foundation of the world yes. that through Jesus, he's going to bring in the church, the body of Christ, 
and the and all of us that makes up the body with the head, mm -hmm. Jesus, amen. Amen. There's gonna be some things that God is gonna use us as He develops us in the body with Jesus the head to glorify Himself and to show off His awesome wonder. Yes. To show off how awesome His mind is, mm -hmm. the mind of God, I'm saying. Yes. Is that he can do so many things that we could never do, but with Christ we can do. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. And so this is what gets me excited because I'm involved in, in the plan of God in, a, in such a way that is beyond what I can understand. Mm -hmm. But know that it is. Mm -hmm. It is beyond what I'm able to comprehend from the beginning to the end. But every step that he reveals mm -hmm. something about his plan for the body to be uh, to participate in this plan, mm -hmm. including, you know, the revelation that he gives each one of us. Like this moment, I called you for a specific moment in time mm -hmm. to do a specific thing mm -hmm. using your specific gift. Yes. Amen. amen. I'm placing you in this building. Amen. amen. And in this building, this is the place that I'm going to I'm gonna, uh, uh, place you so that you will be effective in this spot. That nobody else can fill. Mm. And if you try to put yourself in another spot in the body, use your gift, your, your gift in another area that you shouldn't be using, amen, amen. or another place that you shouldn't, that God didn't say go, amen, amen. It'll, you'll frustrate yourself and the gift will be ineffective. See, the Bible says, I'm getting ahead of myself, but the Bible says your gift will make room for you. Amen? amen. There's a place for your gift. So, I want you to keep this in mind as we move through the scriptures, knowing that Jesus is God, right? We got that, right? We got that. We know Jesus is eternal. Yes. We, we got that too? Amen. We know Jesus is the head of the body. We, we got that too? I got that. Okay. Yeah. And we know that God, all of God's children, are of the body of Christ. Amen. So as we keep this in mind, I want to read something that I did some research on. It comes from the Church of God internationally. Amen? Amen. But I agree with it. I, I researched it and I read it and I said, oh yeah, this is absolutely correct. Listen to this. It simply states, the Greek word for church means assembly. Not building. Assembly. When referring to the people of God, it is used both of the universal assembly or entire body of Christ and each local assembly of believers. Universal assembly is the world. Okay? Mm -hmm. Wherever you are. Mm -hmm. The entire body of Christ is everybody that ever existed, that died, that is, is coming in, into the body at some point. That's the whole body. Mm -hmm. But he says there's a universal assembly, and then there's a... Uh, 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 Oh, and the entire body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And then he says, and then there's each local assemblies. You know, the, the, when we break out and do our own things and our, the, local, the locations of where we worship, mm -hmm. you know, come in together at that place. That's also considered the church. Not, not the place, but when we come together locally, those little small groups that we have, wherever they are, regardless mm -hmm. of how many numbers are, mm -hmm. that group is still the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. And see, and that's key because we don't want to start dividing ourselves with denominations, non-denominations, you know, all those different things that separate us when all of us believe that Jesus is Lord. Amen. See, you might can discuss some things about what you, you know, how you worship or, uh, or some of the doctrine uh, uh, of your denomination or non-denomination or whatever it is, you know, the disciplines that we might have to go through, you know, in that particular church. Okay, you, we, we, we can discuss that, but it shouldn't divide us. Amen? Amen. If you have named Jesus as your Lord, and he is the only one that you're declaring is my Savior, there's no other name that which we may be saved. If that's where you are, you're my brother or sister, mm -hmm. regardless of where you worship. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Amen. Let me continue reading. And so it says, when Jesus said he would build his ecclesia, which is the Greek word for church, amen, in Matthew 16, 18, he was obviously speaking of the universal assembly, which though scattered throughout the world, remember mm -hmm. I said, the universal assembly is, is the body of Christ, but we're all over the place in the world. Yeah. 
The entire body of Christ is those who are already gone before us that have passed on, uh, uh, those who are coming after we're gone before Jesus gets here. Amen? Amen. But the universal is where we're scattered all over the place, but we're still the church. Listen to this. It says, he obviously was speaking of the universal assembly, which though scattered throughout the world is viewed, here we go, from heaven mm. as a single assembly. See, God doesn't look down and see denominations, cliques. He doesn't. He sees his children, 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 children. Jesus, and the, the head and the body, wherever you are, amen? That's what he sees. And it says, uh, he sees from heaven as a single assembly, all united in Christ and gathered spiritually, not before the bishop or the pastor, but before the heavenly throne of God. Mm -hmm. See, get this. When you are a part of the body of Christ, the denominations and non denominations none of that matters. You hear me? Amen. Before God, God looks down and sees Jesus as the head mm -hmm. and we as the body. Yes. We're the church. And Jesus says, upon this rock, which I'm going to get to in a minute about what it means about upon this rock, I will build my church. But whatever he said, whatever he means, when he says upon this rock, he says, that is why, what I'm going to build my church on. This rock that I'm referring to, Jesus says, I'm going to build my church. And guess what? The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It shall not be victorious over the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And this is so exciting because that means I'm victorious already. Let me tell you something. Y'all know that scripture that says we are more than conquerors through him Amen. who strengthened us, right? Yes. Think about that term. Think about what he says. We are more than conquerors. Do you know what a conqueror is? A conqueror is one who conquers. That's right. Right? That's right. Jesus says, I'm, you're more than that. Yes. Thank you. How can you be more than a conqueror if you are already a conqueror that conquers? What's more than a conqueror? Let me tell you what's more than a conqueror. Tell me. I've already won before I fought. Mm. Before I go into battle, I've already got the victory. Yeah, yeah, I got to go through the motions. I, I'm going to have to go conquer it. But to be more than a conqueror means I got a mindset. I got this. Mm. The battle is already won. Yeah. Because I am victorious because Jesus is building his church with me and you and the brothers and sisters and, and mine, amen? amen, to do what? To prevail against adversarial attacks, against uh, uh, the weaponry and the schemes and the, and the temptation, all the things that the adversary would try to do to tear down the church. Guess what? It ain't going to be work. It ain't going to work. It's useless. Amen? Amen. This is why I'm excited. Thank you, okay. Jesus. Listen, he says, uh, but this is what the writer of the book of Hebrews had in mind when he said, and, and what I said was right before that, remember, is that God looks at us from a, as a single assembly, all united in Christ, and gathered spiritually before the heavenly throne of grace. This is what the writer of the book of Hebrews uh, had in view when he said, but ye have come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable, innumerable company of angels, mm -hmm. to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, and to God, the judge of all, mm -hmm. and to the saints of just men made perfect. Do you hear this? Yes. He says, but ye have come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God. Who has? The church. The body of Christ. Mm -hmm. God says, because of what I am doing and what I've created, and, and I've put Jesus in charge because he's ahead, and because he's building this his church, he's building his body greater and greater and more and more. And, and we who are in the body have that special place, yes. amen, and position to be with him so that where are we going? He says, it says here, uh, to bring us before the heavenly Jerusalem. Yes. To an innumerable, innumerable company of angels. One day we're going to see this, right? Mm -hmm. To the general assembly 
and the church of the firstborn. That means everybody who has ever lived, died in Christ, amen, at one point, we're going to all be together, and we're going to all come together, and we're all going to see each other. Amen? Yes, amen? And it says, and to God. Mm. Oh, not done yet. The judge of all, that's God, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. This is found, if you ever want to look at it, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 and 23. 23 excuse me. Jesus is building his church to last. We're going to prevail. And regardless of what this world is bringing at us and, and coming at us, see, one of the things that I try to do is, is when I talk to folks is get their mind and get their focus off of the craziness of this world and put it on the things of God. Yes. What is it that God wants for you to do? Mm. Yeah, yeah, I know this is going on, but is that what, what, is that what you're focusing on mm. going to help you fit in the place and in the body and to fulfill the purpose that God created you to do for Christ. Because if that which is of the world doesn't fit in the agenda of Christ, leave that and focus on what and seek God and find out what it is and where he wants you to be. You hear me? I hear you. All right. We need to know what we are and what we're a part of Mm -hmm. and how powerful we are yes. in Christ. You have been called to serve in a particular place in the church. Yes. And because we could easily get discouraged by the cares of this life, you heard me say this before, we could easily lose focus, right? Yes. Obstacles that seem to block our blessings or our path to get closer to God, right? Yes. Yes. We have to be mindful. Listen to what Paul says. Remember Paul in Romans chapter 7, verse 18? Remember Paul says, The things that I will to do, that I don't do. Mm -hmm. But that which I don't want to do, that I find myself doing. Mm -hmm. And so Paul was sharing how he struggled in doing good, but found mm -hmm. himself sometimes doing the bad things. Just because of his flesh, and because of worldly influences. Yes. This is why you heard me say, don't focus on all the craziness, the worldly influences, all the things that would, would draw your attention away from God and away from what you're really called to do. See, this over here is temporary. What God is trying to say by building his church to last, eternal, forever, mm -hmm. is for just what I said, forever. We can be a part of something that is grander, that is great, that is beautiful, that is everlasting. Yes. Amen? Yes. And all it takes is us to take our eyes off of this and put it on his word, allow his spirit to minister to us, and allow us in our, in our souls to say, yes, Lord. Yes. Agree with, a, 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 a yield to, whatever he wants us to do and however way he wants us to do it. When Paul found himself struggling like this, I'm going to go there. I wasn't going to go there, but it's, remember it's 7, 18, Romans 7, uh, verse 18. But I want to get to the last verse of that chapter. Okay. Romans chapter, uh, uh, is it seven? yeah, 7. But I want to, last two verses. Okay. Because Paul said about himself, oh, wretched, verse 24 and 25, oh, wretched man that I am. Paul was like, I despise how I am because I can't live the way I know God wants me to live. Anybody ever struggle with trying to live and please God all the time, 24-7, without messing up, without making mistakes? Amen? Mm. That, that, you know, we, we make one error of judgment mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, I failed you, Lord. And then God says, I know, but that's why I gave you grace. And that's why all you have to do is just come back to me because my arms are wide open. Yes. to receive you yes. when you say you're sorry. But look, he says, Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of mm -hmm. death? Mm -hmm. And then he, Paul says, I got the answer. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with my mind, I serve the law of God, mm -hmm. but with the flesh, the flesh, the law of sin. See, 
My mind wants to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. My flesh wants to do something else. Mm -hmm. But look at chapter 8, verse 1. There, there is therefore now, now, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. The choice is yours. You remember, the flesh is always going to try to get you to choose to do what it wants. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul struggled. But then Paul says, what? So then, oh, I thank God through, through Jesus Christ our Lord in verse 25. Because mm -hmm. it says, who will, will deliver me you know, from this body of mm -hmm. death? And the answer is Jesus Christ. Yes. He's the only one. And once you surrender to Jesus, now he says, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. who does what? Walk, which means, now keep that in mind, that word walk means practice, live, and walk. So when he says, who walk not according to the flesh, he's saying also, who practices not according to the flesh. He's saying, who lives not according to the flesh. But then he says, but according to the spirit, which means what? You live according to the spirit. You walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. Remember that scripture too. Or you practice in the spirit, the things of the spirit not of the flesh. That's, right. That's where you have your, your relief yes. and your release mm -hmm. from condemnation and the guilt of sin. You hear me? Yes. So, can anything outdo God? No. Oh, thank you, thank you. I didn't even hesitate, amen? Mm -hmm. Because nothing, the mm -hmm. arm of the Lord is not too, too short to deliver, amen? Right. And we know that if God be for us, who can be against us? Yes. We got that. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go back to Matthew. Chapter 16, verses 13 through 18. Mm -hmm. And it says here, Jesus asked, who do men say that I am? And then Peter, Peter answered, now I'm paraphrasing because it's right there. I'm just skipping through it. But Jesus asked the question, who do men say that I am? Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus says to Simon, you are now Peter, Petros, which means in the Greek, stone. Not Rock, it means stone, okay? He says, Peter, you are a stone. Mm. I just had a thought. Turn with me to, uh, uh, I believe it's 1 Peter. And look at chapter 2. This just came to me. Look, watch this. And, and it's all tied too because Jesus says, you are Peter, a stone, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes, and we might have heard teaching where people says, when Jesus says, upon this rock, I will build my church. And right after he said, you are Peter, which means stone, not rock. And so a lot of times people will say, yeah, he was talking to Peter and saying, upon Peter you know, and, and Peter's uh, ministry, he's going to build his church. But no, he said, you are Peter, which means stone. Now look at chapter 2, verse um, 4. He says, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, mm -hmm. coming to him as to a living stone, mm -hmm. rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. Watch this. You also as what? Living stones, plural, are being built up into or built up a spiritual house. What is a spiritual house? Jesus says, upon this rock I will build my what? Church. I'm going to build, but my church is the body of Christ. We see here, you, uh, uh, Peter refers to us as living stones, as part of a spiritual house, right? Yes. It says, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Verse 6. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. Right? Yes. Elect and precious. And he who believes on him, Jesus, will by no means be put to shame. Now, let's go back to Matthew chapter 6. I hope you kept your place there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And so, what I want you to see is that, Peter, yes, you're going to be a, 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 a stone. And, and, and you're going to be a part of something great. Right? Something larger, something more important then maybe you even understand. And I'm talking to the body right now as well. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
that you can understand at this moment, which is the church of the living God. Not just a building, not just a group of people that come together and give God praise and celebrate Jesus and his resurrection. That's all good. But understand, you're a part of something that is living. <laughs> Amen? You're a part of a, the body of Christ that is a living uh, uh, building, a living, precious uh, uh, body for God. In God, I should say, right? Yeah. You are something, you are part of something so good that if you look, if you think about the bigger picture, there's nothing in this world can compare to what Jesus is doing in building his church. Because this church will last. It Amen. will prefer, uh, prevail. Amen? Amen. So, he says, verse 18, you are Peter, right? Mm -hmm. He changed his name. He says, you are a stone. Not you are the rock. But he says, but upon this rock, upon, now let me tell you what this rock represents. If you look at verse um, 13, Jesus asked the question, who do men say that I am? And then he says, in verse 15, who do you say that I am? See, he didn't talk about a rock. He didn't talk about a building, he didn't talk about anything until Peter answered the question, you are the Christ, you are the son of the living God. Jesus says, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father in heaven, and upon your revelation, upon what God just showed you, Amen. that I am the Christ, that I am the Messiah, upon the fact that there is no salvation in any other other than me, I'm going to build my church. Upon this teaching, upon this revelation, upon the rock of all ages, upon me, Jesus says, I'm going to build my church. Yes. You, Peter, are a stone. You're part of me. You're part of the body. But you are not the rock. I'm the rock. You're the stones. The body of Christ is the stones. Amen? Amen. Amen. He says, look, Jesus says, I am the foundation for all Christianity. I am the foundation for salvation. Jesus is the foundation for anything, the resurrection. He's the foundation for uh, uh, baptism. He's the foundation for uh, uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the foundation. Without Christ, none of this other stuff I just mentioned means anything. You hear what I'm saying? I if Jesus it. wasn't here, there's no resurrection. If Jesus wasn't the foundation, he didn't send the Holy Spirit. If Je you see what I'm saying? If Jesus wasn't here, we couldn't declare the deity of him being God. That's right. That's right. If Jesus wasn't here, the Bible says you are saved by what? Grace. Jesus. God gave. What? He gave Jesus. Jesus is grace. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. Right. God gave us a, a Savior who we didn't deserve. That's right. <laughs> okay? Right. Mm -hmm. But because he loved us so much, he gave his only begotten son. Amen. Jesus is not only the foundation. He's the master builder. He's the architect. Mm -hmm. He's the engineer. Yes, he is. He's the construction worker. And we are the tools that he's using to build his church. And this church that he's building will last. Jesus built his church to be victorious and each and every one of us have an important role uh, in his design. I want to leave you with these three things. You ready? Mm -hmm. Number one, Jesus is the rock slash foundation. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. We're going to be there for a little bit. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Amen? Amen? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing that stuff down. I'm writing it. I'm writing it down. I got you. I got you. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 3, we're going to pick up in verses 9, I mean 5 through 9, and then we're going to skip 10. We'll come back to it, and then we're going to hit verse 11. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 through 9. Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believe, as the Lord gave to each one. I planted Apollos, I planted, 
Apollos watered. This is Paul saying, talk. I planted Apollos watered, but it was God who gave the increase. So neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but it is all about God who gives the increase. Yes. We are stones, we are tools in God's hand because God is using us to build something grander, something greater, mm -hmm. something bigger and larger, something that will last forever. Amen? Yes. But God is using us when we say yes, by the way. Yes. Uh, so verse uh, 9, no, verse 8. Now he who plants and he who waters are one. And each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. See? Mm -hmm. We are God's fellow workers. Mm -hmm. You are God's field. You are God's building. Amen? Amen. The body of Christ is what God is using and doing to, to create a glorious body for Christ. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. See, Jesus, God wants to exalt. The Father wants to lift up Jesus and show off his splendor mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. Jesus. The brilliance of God is going to be evident through Christ. Yeah. And as we grow and as we who are body, of the body, the fellow workers in the field and the fellow uh, uh, workers in the building, mm -hmm. as we work together, that's where God gets all the glory. Yes. Because we're operating by faith. And we're trusting that whatever we say yes to for God, God's got it. Because Jesus is, I'm building the church, not you. All right? Amen. In verse 11. For no other foundation can anyone lay that, than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. That's right. Or Jesus Christ. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the foundation. Upon this rock, upon the revelation of who Jesus is, I'm going to build this church. Mm. Right? Yes. This is the revelation for the body of Christ. Yes. Jesus being the foundation. Mm -hmm. He is the Christ. He is the Son of God. Yes. He is the chief cornerstone. He is the main piece of the church. Right? The head. There's no salvation in any other. Number two. Be careful how you build on his foundation. See, remember, Jesus says, mm. I'm building the church. Okay? But you who are in the body must participate. You have been given gifts. You have been given a location in the body to, be, to benefit the whole body. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter 3, and we're going to look at verse 10. Then we're going to jump 11, because we just read 11, and we'll hit okay. 12 through 15. Same chapter, verse 3, I mean chapter 3, verse 10. According to the, this is Paul, mm -hmm. according to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, here's that word master builder again, I have laid the foundation. Well, wait a minute. Jesus says, there's no other foundation that anyone uh, uh, can lay other than that which has already been laid. Jesus is the foundation. Paul says, but I'm laying a foundation on top. I have a ministry. God has called me to continue on proclaiming the gospel. What? God has called me to build on mm -hmm. the rock the revelation of Christ. So my job, Paul says, I have to continue on adding to the foundation. So I have a, a sort of what he called a a uh, uh, semi-foundation. But watch this. Let's keep reading. He says, uh, according to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. And another builds on it. Jesus laid a foundation. Paul's laying a foundation. And he says, all of us got to lay a foundation mm. on top of the rock. Mm. Right? On top of the revelation of who Christ is. We're supposed to represent Christ. We're supposed to tell everybody who Jesus is as the son, like Peter, the son of the living God, the Christ. You are the Messiah. You are the ordained one. You are the commissioned one. You are the one that God sent into the world to save the world for whosoever will believe. But then he goes on, he says, 
But let each one take heed how he builds on it. See? Mm -hmm. Your work in the kingdom is going to be tested. You need to know that. That's why Paul says, be careful how one builds on top of the foundation that has already been laid. And if you look down here, we're going to keep reading. We're going to go down to uh, 12 through 15. Watch this. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, worldly things, carnality things, things that are uh, natural in the world, right? Mm -hmm. He says, uh, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it, or what sort it is. Paul says, be careful. Mm -hmm. Don't go out there and try to, try to start teaching some doctrine apart from the Bible. Don't go out there and talk, start trying to interpret this word to be what you want it to be as opposed to what it is. Amen? Amen. The Bible is the infallible word of God. Mm -hmm. Everything that is spoken in this Bible from, uh, from Genesis to Revelation was inspired by God through men. Amen. Even Revelation, which we'll get there one day, talks about how God gave the angels, or excuse me, Jesus gave the angels to speak to uh, uh, John. But it came from God. And then God wrote what he heard. Where? What did he hear? He wrote Revelation. Revelation meaning what? Spiritual understanding, enlightenment. In other words, God gave, revealed, which is where the word revelation comes from. God revealed to John the book of Revelation. The things that are going to take place shortly. And that's what he says that, as he opens, by the way. But then, okay, re re let us read down to 15. Mm -hmm. If anyone, verse 14. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive reward. Right? Mm -hmm. And if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. See, he says, you're not going to lose your salvation. Just because you didn't do what I asked you to do, when you came into the body, you know, it's just a matter of either you surrendering to me and learning and growing and being discipled, or you, you know, getting caught up maybe even by some... Uh, false teaching, amen, mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe not of your own, uh, made errors, but maybe was led to say and do things and, and to go on and teach certain things that is not of God. He says, I'm going to test everything you all do. Whatever ministry you have, now I'm talking about not just, you know, purpose for life in general. I'm talking about your personal ministry, your ministry of being a head of the house as a husband and a father. Your ministry as a woman, a wife, being a helpmate that God created. Amen? Mm -hmm. Look at Proverbs, uh, I think it's 28. No, not, don't go there now. But I'm saying, look at Proverbs, which you all know the story of the virtuous wife. Mm -hmm. That was given by God for an example of how a wife's supposed to live. And then it talks about the children. You know? You know, honor your mother and father. You know? And, and, and there's, so there's different things that we have to learn and that we're going to do based on either God's word or what we think it means or our own agenda. Be careful how you build on his foundation. Mm, mm. It's going to be tested. Yes. It's going to be tried. Mm -hmm. And Proverbs 18, 16 says this, your gift will make room for you. All we got to do is seize that right moment. All we have to do is is be alert and look at where do I fit? Be led by the Spirit, wherever that is, and however way God wants to use you, but be led. And when you are led by the Spirit, if you are seeking God and you are looking for God, mm -hmm. when He opens that door, seize that moment. Yes. Go right in through that door and say, this Lord I believe is what you're calling me to. To fit as a living stone in this building, which is the body of Christ, because you got a plan that Jesus is doing in us that mm -hmm. is going to last forever. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad I'm a part of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Lastly, mm -hmm. stand firm on this foundation and prevail. Stand firm on this foundation and prevail. We're going to go right back to Matthew chapter 16. 
and we're going to look at verse 19. And he says, right after he says, and I, verse 18, And I also say to you that you are Peter, Petros, the stone. And on this rock, the revelation of Christ, who he is and what he's about, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, or hell, shall not prevail or be victorious against it. Verse 19, I will give you the keys, listen to this word, of the kingdom, not keys to the kingdom, okay? I'm, Jesus, I'm going to give you the key. And by the way, when he's talking to Peter and he says, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom, he gave, you'll look in ver, uh, later verses, he gave all the disciples the same thing. I will give you the keys of the kingdom, right? And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Now, the interpretation, if you look at it and do a study on will be bound, actually means has already been bound. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, uh, and whatever you loose, in he uh, loose on earth will be loose in heaven, actually means whatever you loose on earth has already been loose in heaven, right? Amen. That's why he says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because mm -hmm. whatever we're going to try to do on earth is already done in heaven. We just got to catch up to it. We just have to exercise the authority, my keys. See, that's what a key does. A key gives me the right to open a door or close the door. It gives me a right or the authority to bind and to loose. Let me keep going. Use your keys of the kingdom. Not to the kingdom, but as Jesus directs us by his authority, we're to use our own authority to bind, which means to forbid, or to loose, which means to permit, right? Mm -hmm. That which will enhance the kingdom agenda. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about, oh, I bind this and I loose this, I hope it has a, 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 an effect on the kingdom agenda. He didn't give you keys to operate in the world, and he didn't give you keys to fight the adversary all mm -hmm. the day long. Mm -hmm. He gave you keys to affect the kingdom agenda, which is to build the church. <laughs> you mm -hmm. hear what I'm saying? Yeah. He didn't say nothing about Satan here. He said, what I've given you is to hold firm, to permit the kingdom agenda to go forward or to stop that the, the false teaching, uh, the adversarial attack, right? Mm -hmm. so, so correct me you know, what I just said in a sense, because yeah, in one area, you are to forbid, but you can't fight. You can't fight the adversary. You just speak what God says. The Lord rebuke you, not I rebuke you. Jesus, God, <laughs> God himself, and I think it's in the book of Job, when he was, was, was uh, speaking with the adversary, and they had their little encounter going on, and then God said to Satan, the Lord, talking about himself, he says, the Lord rebuke you. Now, if God says the Lord rebuke you, if Michael in Revelation, or in Jude, I'm sorry, in the book of Jude is contentious with, with uh, Satan, and Michael, who threw Satan out, by the way, when it got down to it, he just said, you know what, the Lord rebuke you. He didn't even say, I rebuke you. So if these powerful either angels or God himself is using that term, the Lord rebuke you, where in the Bible do you see anybody else as a person say, I rebuke you? No. What you should say is the Lord rebuke you, which means to stop, to hinder, to restrict. What you bind on earth has been bound in heaven. What you loose on earth has been loose in heaven. Remember that. Amen. Whatever the kingdom agenda is, we know it has to do with salvation. It has to do with righteousness. It has to do with perseverance. And it has to do with triumphant. Jesus built his church, or is building his church to last. Jesus is building his church to prevail. And we will Amen. take that in solace. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you have chose us. That we didn't choose you, but you chose us. And when you called us into your kingdom to be called by your name, 
to become your children through adoption in Christ. We are so glad about it that you did it. And that now, Lord God, we are called by your name. We are yours, Lord. We are a part of something great. Even greater than we thought before this message. But now we know even more, Lord God, that we are being built together in unity. And that when you look down, you don't see divisions. You don't see denominations. You see the people of God who surrendered to your son, Jesus. And so we thank you. We pray, Father, that you would continue to keep that in the forefront of our mind as we go through this system of the world that we're living in. And not get distracted, not get pulled away, not get uh, uh, swayed or, 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 or influenced in a way that we forget the total and the bigger picture, which is Jesus building his church. We thank you, we love you, and we bless you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his glorious presence. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glorified, majesty, dominion, and power, now and forevermore. And let the church say, Amen.